As an artist, I think it's important to work outside your comfort zone, and I didn't study science or medicine. Standardized Patient is a project that traces a series of encounters between standardized patients who are actors trained to portray medical patients and various encounters that they have with doctors in training, with medical students. There's this central screen that divides the room, and on one side of it you see actors essentially communicating with medical professionals. And then there's this whole other side of the project that happens on the flip side of the screen. So if you walk around the screen and see it from the other side, what you encounter are basically a series of stills that at first blush might appear to be really dry or less interesting. But it's really that side of the screen that shares a lot of the backstory of this project. So you see fragments of the scripts that the standardized patients are working from, but you also see the diagnostic flow charts and the sets of procedures and the statistical information that doctors are working from in order to glean a correct diagnosis. The project is organized around four different encounters between um, people who are playing patients and the medical students that are trained to treat them. One of the patients is a young woman, 16 years old, who's coming in to seek some counseling about birth control. Another patient is a woman in her 30s who's very uh, hardworking, leads a very stressful life, and is experiencing chest pain that she's basically ignoring. In these encounters, both parties in a way are performing, but it's possible for them to suspend disbelief and connect in a way that is real. And, you know, there were moments when we were filming this that really surprised me, when I really felt that connection. A patient, Richard Bloom, is asked about his end-of-life decisions, uh, what he's hoping, how he's hoping to communicate with his family, um, how he wants his care to unfold. Uh, he's terminally ill with colon cancer, and it's revealed that really what he's most concerned about is his relationship with his daughter. And when I talked with the actor who plays that part at length, he explained to me, you know, it's, it's interesting that I'm playing someone dying of colon cancer because my mother died of colon cancer. And he said, you know, often what comes up at the end of one's life, you know, it really makes clear like what's most important to you. And so often the medical issues aren't really front and center. It's really about how we make peace with the people that we care about most. Uh, my daughter, is, she lives in Vermont, got a little farm she owns with a couple other people. Mm -hmm. She's just been here this week. I haven't seen much of her over the years. What I saw happening in that encounter was a real connection between two people. They were really listening to each other. Medical school is stressful and intense, and the people that get into Stanford or that get into USC are likely there because they're great students. They may not be there because they're great communicators or because they know how to be good listeners. You know, we tend to think about medicine uh, as being a kind of hard science. You know, there's these like mysteries in the body to uncover and through science and knowledge and facts, we can like get to the bottom of things. And we think about visual art and film as being the realm of emotion and affect. Um, what's interesting to me is that these standardized patients and this kind of interaction that doctors are learning how to become like more sensitive to the emotional needs of their patients, I think really suggests that that, that dichotomy is, is, is false, that in fact, for healthcare to really work, for the outcomes to be really good, doctors do need to be sensitive to the emotional needs of their patients. 